All right, you guys, I peeled off all the parts. Um, since I did use quick coat and it was on this kind of paper, some of the back sticked sometimes and other times not. Um, if you use regular setting resin, it should not do this. And for some reason, it didn't do it to the green ones. And I think that's because I used just a tint, not a paste, so it made it thinner. I don't know. I don't know the science behind it, but I do know that these, some of them have the backing on them. But we're gonna make a flower anyways, I hope. So I have my hot glue gun plugged in, a spare little glue stick. Where, Marco, there it is. Spare little glue stick. And my heat gun, and I, I have the heat gun because um, since it was quick coat and I let it set for as long as I did. It's kind of hard to bend, but if you hit it with a little bit of heat, then it's more malleable. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take the, hmm, let's see which one we should put in the middle. This one looks like a good middle one, mainly because it's got a whole bunch of white on the back of it from the paper. We're gonna try to make it work. I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit of heat just so that it becomes more bendy, malleable. Um, be careful when you do this because heat guns get really hot and I don't have anything protecting my hands from the heat. So just for your knowledge, be careful. So now it's easier to bend. I'm going to try to roll it and decide whether I want the white side on the inside or the outside. Actually, I need more heat. Much better. So I think I'm gonna leave the red on the outside. Uh-oh. So if you wait too long it'll crack instead of just bend and roll so so much for that guy Let's see if this one be better that's why it's important to get it pretty warm so that you can bend it without snapping it this middle part i want kind of a tight spiral so i'm pinching the bottom to be thinner than the top. But the longer you work with it, the more heat it loses. So it's becoming more and more stiff, as it were. What's up, y'all? So. I peeled my quick coat petals off of my paper and realized that it was going to, I think the quick coat gets too hot so it peeled off a lot of the paper with, for some reason it didn't do that to my leaves. They peeled off just fine for some reason and I think it's because I used a tint which is thinner than the paste and everything that I did these with. so. For the most part, I mean, some came off without any issues, but most of them took some paper with them, which I wouldn't really mind so much, but they are hard to bend, and I can add heat to these to make them more malleable, but if you're not careful and you wait too long from like adding the heat, you can actually crack your resin like this. So that's not a good look. So I think what I'm gonna do is use these for the exterior of my rose. And to give you a little reminder, even though this is the same video, um, I took some leftovers and made this one the other day. I'm still trying to figure out how I'm gonna put a stem on it, but um, pretty pumped about it. So right now, I'm just going to um, 
make some petals out of regular art coat. This is by Stone Coat Countertops. It's one of my favorite resins right now for all of the reasons for anything that you're looking for in resin. They've got it. Um, so let's get this show on the road. <sighs> Get these out of the way now I'm going to be pouring my petals out on this surface this is just well maybe not this surface because I have stained it with something already so let's adjust it's always good to have something this is something Jeff painted a while back but it's a board so I'm going to put my paper on this so that I can transport it out of the way and do another round of petals. Can't have too many petals on a rose, I feel like. So I'm just taking this sheet of, it's probably very akin to like butcher paper. There's a matte side, a shiny side, and you want to pour on the shiny side because that will release more easily additionally when you pour on something matte your thing whatever it is that you're making will not be shiny it will be matte if you pour on something shiny it will be shiny when you peel it off so the front and the back side of these are shiny this is the back obviously because it's got paper attached and that's the front you can also just spray varnish or a gloss spray to make them extra shiny, which I probably will end up doing anyways. But let's get our pour on. Um, when you're mixing your resin, you wanna pour the thin one in first. This keeps, I have something on the bottom of this cup. This keeps, um, it just makes it easier to incorporate both parts of your resin. Another good thing about working with a regular resin instead of a fast setting resin is that you don't have to stress out about getting everything in shape in a certain amount of time because um, with quick coat you have to have it done within 15 minutes it'll start setting up whereas with art coat you've got a good they say hour working time. I've worked it up to two hours before, which is amazing. Also, if you're interested in any Stone Coat products, use our code YALL, all caps, no punctuation, for a $10 off $100 order discount. Anytime you can save a dollar helps. Resin is not cheap. So I'm just going to mix and incorporate the two parts of my resin together. Right now it's very cloudy and hazy looking. When you're done mixing and it's fully incorporated, it will be clear. You wanna make sure you scrape the sides, the bottom, and your stir stick to make sure that everything is fully incorporated into itself. If you don't, you'll end up with weak spots and that's not a fun time. To fix. I think usually it says on the bottle to mix for three minutes. It all depends largely on whether you're using a power tool to mix or if you're hand mixing and how much you're mixing determines how long you should mix your two parts together for. I usually go till it runs clear and you can't see the swirls of the two parts. Like right now you can still kind of see swirls of where the two parts are coming together. It's still slightly cloudy. The bubbles are normal. We're going to get rid of those with some heat later. But you want to make sure that everything is well mixed. Whoops. And you like if you drop something out and it's this early in the mixing, you want to get rid of it because if I were to have poured one of my petals over that area, and it still had that drop. I'm not sure if that was mostly A, mostly B, or if it was a good mixture, but not risking it, just get rid of it. 
I have found through my year of working with resin that my hand usually starts to cramp around the time that my two parts are mixed together. <coughs> Excuse me. So I always go to that point and then mix a little bit more. It's better to be safe than sorry and you have plenty of working time to dedicate extra in ensuring that your resin is fully mixed. So for this round of petals, I'm mixing 10 ounces of resin. Not sure how much I'm gonna need, but I'd rather have too many petals than not enough. Like on this one, it's clearly lopsided. Like there should be some more petals around this side. But this was all just overflow resin. So I just ran out. So I'm just gonna save that till I get another batch of fall off, fall drip. You know what I mean? Extra resin to apply to that one. I'm not going to apply any of these red ones because that just wouldn't go. But anything mostly white with a little bit of blue that I do, because I do a lot of those colors, I'll add to it. So, I'm going to do a white, a red, and a green. Because I'm going to give those petals another shot. Right. Some stir sticks. And we've got our green. Um, this is a tint from Color Obsession. This is the same color I used for the first bit of the leaves. I'm not putting that much into it because you don't have to. But ultimately, no matter how much of this tint I put in here, it's gonna be transparent because that's the nature of this particular additive. So it's very much like a melted green Jolly Rancher right now, which is what I'm looking for. This is gonna be red. For this red, I'm using Cherry Paste by Color Obsession. It is um, slightly translucent, so you can still see through it. It's not opaque. And that's good because I want to be able to see through these rose petals. And I'm gonna add some glitter. And if you use something that's too opaque, it'll just consume whatever sparkle or glitter you add in there and just be useless. So you wanna use something that you can see through if you're adding glitter, in my opinion. So that's slightly see-through, just barely, which is enough to be able to see glitter through. So now I find my red glitter, Marco. I don't understand. It was right here earlier. There it is. This is Bewitched by Just Resin. I carry all these in my online shop usually. Um, Assuming I haven't run out, it's available for purchase. Artistildeath.com, two T's, two L's. When you mix glitter into anything or mica powder, you gotta be careful so that you don't end up with floating particles. I don't know the health risks of breathing in glitter, but I know that you should not breathe in mica. So just keep that in mind. Beautiful sparkle. 
And now I'm gonna add some white. For this white, I'm using just resins, titanium. Ugh. It's a great white, it's very opaque. And I just need a little bit of it to add just some extra little something in there because I don't want it to be just a boring flat red. Anytime you use a paste, you want to stir it just a little bit because some will separate and that's not a bad thing. It's not a thing at all. It's just something you have to, if you want the best version of whatever color you're using, you have to make sure that you're getting a bit of all of it. So when it separates, um, you may leave part of some important something that's in there out. Just getting rid of anything that may have fallen out. All right, so I have my white, my green, and my red. I'm gonna leave the green for now. Just set that aside. And now I'm gonna make some petals. I'm just pouring bits out and I'll just shape it with the star stick. So petals are kind of round, kind of oval. Sometimes they have some points at the top. So I'm just going to spread this resin out into a petalesque shape. Petalesque, is that like a word? I don't know if that's a word. So the nature of resin is that it's gonna go wherever it's already been. So if I just scoot it to different areas, it'll fill in all these little voids. But I'm gonna help it along just cause I want it to be kind of an even coat. gonna be really difficult for me to be patient and just let this set up I'm gonna have to like make it an out of sight out of mind situation until like 12 hours from now it should be good enough to um, form my rose some of them I'm gonna make more oval than others because they're going to be like more interior petals and so I'm going to be rolling those up first level of petals done I'm just going to scoot this to the edge of the board that I have them on Make sure that they don't fall over that side though, because that wouldn't be good. More red. Um, when you're mixing more resin or more color into your design, make sure that you don't take the stick that you have with resin on it and put it back in your pot of color because you will not like it when you open your color again and it has completely seized up because you have resin in it. So save yourself that stress and just don't risk it. Get a new stick. You don't have to add glitter. I'm just going to because I feel like it gives it another dynamic. I mean, if you're making a rose, it's probably for a lady or someone that likes glitter anyways, cause rose. But feel free to leave that out if you don't have any or if you're just not a glitter fan for some reason. Always check to make sure you're where your edges are so you don't pour outside of it. And cause problems. Now flowers aren't 
ever really perfect. So you really don't have to worry about that. It's kind of like when you do geodes. I think people put too much thought into it being perfect everything and nature's not perfect. So if you have something that's just slightly off, it's actually usually more visually interesting than it would have been otherwise. So just keep that in mind and don't stress out about it's not a perfect circle or perfect oval. It doesn't have to be. You can always pluck an actual petal off a rose for reference, but I think that will just give you anxiety to make something an actual, sh like specific particular shape. And ain't nobody got time for that. Another cool thing about resin is it will stay within whatever area you want it to be in. So since there's a little bit of extra out here, it may actually run into that. But other than that, it's going to stay at the boundary that I've given it by pushing the resin out like this. So it will only go to the edge of this. If you wanted to, you could do molds, but I feel like that's just too much effort um, and it's just not necessary. In my opinion, that's not to say you can't or shouldn't. That's just, I'm not going to because this is effective. And the resin will dome to the edge. And if you do a mold and you have like that sharp edge that you're gonna end up having to sand down and it's a headache for me. I'm just popping the bubbles a little bit. So a little bit of heat will do it. And now I'm going to add some white detail like I did in the other one. You can get specific with this and like do it a certain design if you want to. I'm going to be pushing it with my heat gun. So I'm just trying to do a little bit really. Now usually I'm a swipe person but for this I'm just going to push it with this platypus attachment. That's all for these guys. I'm gonna let it just set up. Make sure your paper's flat so that your petals will finish flat. I'm gonna move this and then continue making petals on the actual table. I'm going to continue making petals on this and then I'll just leave it here I'm just gonna color inside of this. Um, mm -hmm. This hasn't been in the resin yet, so I'm gonna use it to get more red out. And I just wipe it on the side of my bucket O resin. Adding glitter also gives your resin a little bit of structure so that once you have your petals in place, they won't completely wilt. Glittery redness. Beautiful. So now I don't have the um, board underneath is just flat on this table so it doesn't really matter as long as your table is level where you start pouring your petals out at i just realized that this table is not exactly level 
So we may end up with lopsided petals, but again, nature is not perfect. So I don't have to be, and it'll be fine either way. My basic artistic style is just don't stress about it. It'll be fine. It's art. And you can make any mistake you want and just call it a choice. I used to do that in college all the time. I don't like to waste even a drop of resin. It's not the cheapest medium to work with, but it is one of the most beautiful. If you want to reuse your buckets, all you have to do is take a rag with alcohol on it. The higher the proof, the better. And just wipe it out. With colored resin, a little bit more difficult, but you can always see where you've missed because it's stained. Um, and our handy dandy stir sticks you can get on our website, artisttilldeath.com. Um, just wipe these off with and I'll call rag two and it'll be ready for your next use. Now I need my something to shape these. Now I have space to add my leaves and I think I'm going to add some glitter to these guys too. I'm going to use the fine halo by just resin. It's Crazy Bananas Disco Sparkly. <gasps> that was way more than I intended, but that's fine because beautiful. Ooh. I should have this color back in stock. Um... This week, at the latest, the beginning of next week. Now, I don't know what I'm gonna use for the stem yet, so I'm gonna make enough petals for whatever may pop up. Maybe I'll just make a big stem of green leaves. I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Jerry's still out. So making these into a leaf shape isn't that hard. All you gotta do is put a point at one end. And if you wanna get fancy with it, you can do the spiny kind of points that are in rose petal leaves, rose petal leaves, you know what I mean? No, they're like blobbing together, but I'll just cut them with scissors after. Um, after they've set. That is why it's super important to make sure your surface is level. I think I'm gonna put a little bit of white in these guys too. Adding the white is completely optional. I just feel like it adds just a little bit of dimension. Now we just wait 